Hello viewers, hope you're all doing good. Welcome to this video. I'm Venkat and this is Just Me, an open source channel. Right, and um, this is another episode of Monday Mongo and probably this will be my final video in this uh, series because I'm struggling to find some time between the ongoing Kubernetes and the newly started AWS series. So I've been releasing four videos every week, but I can't keep up with that. So I'm going to put an end to this MongoDB um, series. So, yep. So this is going to be my last video in this series. This is about MongoDB sharding. And in the last two videos, we covered uh, sharding in detail. The first video was about how to set up your shard. And then the second video is about adding a shard to the existing shard cluster and so on. Uh, we haven't really talked about how to shard a collection. So, so far we have talked just about setting up the sharding, but not actually sharding anything. So that's what uh, we will be looking at in this video. So uh, just to refresh your mind, refresh your memories, I'm going to bring up my notes that I used in the previous videos. So we have our Mongo AS, that's the router, and we have config servers as a replica set. So there are three MongoDB instances uh, running in a replica set. So that will be our config servers. And for our shard cluster, we had one shard. And then in the second video, we added the second shard. So each of these shard is a replica set, collection of three MongoDB instances, one primary and two secondary. So I have now uh, three plus three, six plus three, nine plus one, 10 MongoDB instances, all of them running as Docker containers on my uh, local machine local workstation here. So since I have to run all these containers on my local workstation, they're all running on different ports. Uh, this is not advisable to do in production. In production, you will be running each of these instances uh, in its own machine. So for demonstration purpose, I don't have access to those many machines. So I'm putting everything as a container and running on my local workstation on different ports, of course. Okay. so. That's my setup. I've got that. If I do Docker PS, you can see that's the shard one uh, replica set, shard two replica set, config server replica set, and the Mongo ES router. So all your connections uh, to the sharded cluster will be through the Mongo ES router. And the config servers are uh, the servers that store metadata about your cluster. So which shard contains which data and so on. So the Mongo ES router will uh, fetch the data from the config server, it caches the data locally, and then it routes uh, the traffic, read or write traffic to the appropriate shard, depending on which data you want and so on. So that's kind of rough, quick introduction to refresh your memories about uh, MongoDB. Right, let's now get into MongoDB. So we need to enable sharding and uh, let's see how it works, okay? So I'm gonna log in to Connect to the Mongo ES. So Mongo MongoDB 192.168.1.81 and the one that's running on port 60,000 is my Mongo ES instance. I'm connected to it. Show DBs, DB. Okay, we are connected to the test DB sharding sh.status. So we have two shards, shard one RS and shard two RS, and these are the members of the uh, shard replica set. So we have two shards, okay? So let's create a uh, database. Use shard demo. Switch to shard demo if I do DB. So we are in the shard demo and we don't have any collections at all. So in order to um, enable sharding, uh, in order to shard a collection, you don't actually shard a database, you shard a collection, right? So in order to shard a collection, sharding needs to be enabled for that database. So I've created shard demo, that's the database. I'm going to create a collection now, but I haven't enabled sharding on the database. So just to show you what error you would get if you don't enable sharding on the database, but you're not sharding the database. You just need to enable sharding on the database but what you are sharding is the collection itself. And you have to set up sharding for your collection. Let's see how it all works. db.create collection. So I'm gonna create a collection called movies. I'm also going to create a second collection. I'm just going to show you some difference. Movies to show collections. 
right we have two collections movies and movies 2 all right so let's see if you want to know whether a collection is sharded or not the command is db dot movies 2 for example the collection that you want to check dot get shard distribution so that will tell you whether the collection is sharded or not so now it says collection shard demo dot movies 2 is not sharded okay so let's uh, shard the database so bear in mind the collection is empty it doesn't have any data at all and I'm gonna also show you how to enable sharding uh, for a collection that already has some data right so first let's look at a normal use case we've got an empty collection which is movies 2 and we are going to set up sharding for that collection and that collection is completely empty it's all gonna work fine okay so sh dot shard collection so which collection you're going to shard it has to be full path not just the uh, collection name so shard demo so that's the database dot and the collection name which is movies 2 and then a shard key so I'm not going to go I'm not going to explain in detail about shard key but that is very important shard key uh, is the one based on which your data will be sharded across multiple shards it's split into some chunks of data and then those chunks are sent to different shards in your cluster so that's all depends on your uh, shard key and the index and so on so there are a couple of ways one is range based key and the other one is hashed key and so on um, so that's a different topic I'm not bothered to go deep into that topic you can um, read the official documentation on how to choose a sharded key okay so in my case this movies database I haven't got any documents uh, inside that it's an empty collection but I'm going to insert some uh, documents into it in a minute but I'm going to say title hashed so I'm going to choose title uh, which is one of my um, field in the collection I'm going to use that field as my shard key and I'm going to say that it is a hashed key okay so we tried to enable sharding for a collection, but we got an error message saying sharding not enabled for DB shard demo. I just wanted to show you why that's happening because we haven't enabled sharding for our database. So we need to do that first. All right, so sh.enable sharding and the database name, which is shard demo. Right, so we have enabled sharding on our database. So once you enable sharding for the database, and in that database you can have lots of collections so you don't have to shard every single collection you can uh, shard some collections and you can uh, leave that some you can leave some collections without sharding so it can coexist sharded collection and the not sharded collection can coexist in a database which is enabled for sharding so we are just saying that this database has sharding enabled so if you want to shard your collection you can go ahead and shard your collection otherwise not a problem so when we enable sharding for any database then depending on the number of shards you have got there will be one primary shard for all the collections that you don't shard it will go to a default primary shard so when you enable sharding for a database it will be assigned a primary shard so in my case let's say we've got two shards so shard demo database will have one of these shards as the primary shard so any collection that you don't specify sharding will go into that primary shard all right so now let's go and run the uh, shard collection so we are trying to shard the movies to collection right cool sharded movies collection and now if I do db dot movies to dot get shard distribution so now you can see shard one replica set so this is shard two replica set at the moment there are no documents or no chunks totals and so on okay so that's how it works and if I check the other collection db.movies which we created previously sharding is not enabled this is just to show you that in database you can have collections that are sharded and that are not sharded they can coexist okay right right now time to insert some documents into our 
collection movies too. So I'm going to exit out of this and I've got a simple for loop to iterate and insert documents into my collection. For i in, okay, so for i in 1 to 50, echo minus e, use shard demo, and then db.movies2.insert1, and the title is Spider-Man $1, so Spider-Man 1, Spider-Man 2 to Spider-Man 50, language is English, so a very simple document with just two fields, movie title and the movie language, and I'm piping that to Mongo and connecting to Mongo S yes, router. Okay, so that's running and it's gonna create like 50 records. Let's log in and check whether we have all those data. Use shard demo db.movies2. Find okay, cool. Spider-Man 1, 5, 7, 8, and all those. Uh, details are there. So we have inserted lots of documents db.movies2.count. Okay, so we've got 50 documents db.movies2.get shard distribution. Okay, so this is what I wanted to show you. So shard1, so that's shard2. That's shard1. So your collection is sharded. Movies2 collection is sharded. So it is split between these two shards, shard one and shard two. And in here, if you see, shard one contains 54% of your data and shard one contains 46% of data. So it has 23 dogs, shard two, and shard one has 27 uh, dogs. So in total, we had like, we inserted 50 documents 23 documents went to shard 2 and 27 documents went to shard 1, right? So that's sharding. So we have enabled sharding and everything is running fine. All right, so let's look at another example. What if you want to shard a collection that already has some documents? So db.movies.find, we don't have any data at the moment. So let's try and insert a couple of uh, data into uh, db.movies. So again, I'm going to use the same for loop uh, command. Use shard demo db dot movies dot insert one, and I'm going to insert the same data. So it doesn't matter. Let's insert um, five records, for example. Okay, that's done, and let's log into uh, the Mongo yes router. Use shard demo db dot movies dot Find okay, so we have five records and this database is not shard sharded db.movies.get shard distribution. Cool, so this is not sharded. So now if I try to shard this database, let's see what error we are gonna see. Because um this database, sorry, this collection, we haven't created an index for this collection. If the collection is empty, when you do sh dot shard collection so that will create an index but we already have some data already have some documents in this uh, collection so we are going to get some error let's see what we are going to get shard demo dot it has to be full part so bear that in mind shard demo dot movie so that's the collection name that we want to shard and then uh, what is it we are going to shard based on shard key is again let's say title and hashed okay so the error message is please create an index that starts with the proposed shard key and so on so because the data already exists and we don't have an index uh, we can't uh, shard this collection we have to create an index first let's create that um, db dot movies dot create index and index is based on title colon one okay that's done and now let's try and shard this collection please create an index that starts with the proposed shard key before sharding the collection okay something didn't work right db.movies.create index title and let's say hashed 
Um, okay, that seems to be fine. Let's see if it works now. Cool, so now we have um, configured the uh, shard for this collection. Okay, db.movies.get shard distribution. Cool, so since we had only one uh, shard, sorry, since we only had, since we already had some data in it and it has uh, set that to shard2 replica set, I guess shard2 is the primary shard for this shard demo database. Okay, let's uh, do some testing. sh.status, sharding status. And if you look for shard demo dot movies two, um, we have sorry, okay, for shard demo database, the primary shard is shard two replica set. So for all the collections that we haven't enabled sharding, the deep by default it goes to shard two unless you enable sharding. So once you enable sharding, the data will be split across multiple. Uh, shards so data will be sp split into chunks and you can configure the chunk size and how many documents per chunk and all those details which I'm not going to go deep into I just want to cover the basics so um, I hope you got an idea of how to set up sharding and how it actually works and so on db.movies2.get shard distribution okay and make your decision right so when you are creating your shard key uh, you have to think carefully how to choose a shard key because once you created your shard key and once you enabled sharding for your collection and your data is shard across multiple clusters and then if you want to change uh, the shard key uh, it would be very difficult you have to dump the database uh, dump the collection externally and then restore the dump with a different shard key or so on. So it will be a very expensive operation. So think wisely and uh, get that right at the first attempt. So that's all I wanted to show you. And uh, thank you so much for watching this entire Monday Mongo series. And as I mentioned before, this will be the last video in this Monday Mongo series. Thank you so much for your support and motivation. I will see you all in another video on another series. Meanwhile, if you've got any questions or any um, doubts if something is not working right for you, uh, I'm not closing this series, but I'm not uploading any more videos into this series. So uh, if you've got any questions or any of the videos in this series, uh, feel free to leave me a comment and I will continue supporting this series in the comment section, all right? And if you like this video, please share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And if you want, you can click the bell icon and so that you will get instantly notified when I upload new videos. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.